you're taking an iron supplement. Your reason? Well, maybe it's because you are genuinely iron deficient. You've got the labs to prove it. Your hemoglobin and ferritin levels are low. Maybe it's because you feel flat as a pancake and you're hoping it will give you a bit of a lift. Maybe it's an insurance policy. Iron supplementation is officially recommended for pregnant women and vegetarians. Or maybe you just want to make sure you're covering all your bases. And it's one of a host of supplements you take. Whatever your reason, have you ever stopped to think what happens when you take that iron supplement? Could there be unforeseen consequences? Mm. For your beta cells? Iron overload has been implicated in bronze diabetes. This is the diabetes that strikes people with hemochromatosis. So it's a valid question and one that a team of Indian researchers decided to ask. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we find out how your beta cells react to your iron supplementation. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. So, let's start with the basics. Chemically speaking, iron supplements are not equivalent to dietary iron. A variety of chemicals are used as iron sources in oral iron supplements. They always have the iron atom, which is in the ferrous form, and something else joined on. The something else varies and impacts the price. So you get ferrous sulfate, ferrous fumarate, ferrous glycinate, ferrous gluconate, etc etc etc. Sulfate is most often used because it is significantly cheaper but the iron is always a ferrous atom. But this is not actually the form that dietary iron arrives in. When it arrives in meat it is in the form of heme. Now this form of iron has its own biology which is a story for another day. In the case of dietary non-heme iron, the iron atom is in the ferric form. Ferric and ferrous are different. Now the difference between them relates to the number of electrons the iron atom has lost. In the case of ferric, it's lost three, giving it a plus three charge. And in the case of ferrous, it's lost two electrons, which means it still has an electron to play with. Ferrous, ferric, who cares? Well, chemically it matters. That spare electron is responsible for much of iron's biology. Iron moves electrons around and this facilitates lots of chemical reactions, good ones and not so good ones making iron both helpful and hurtful at the same time. Now there are a multitude of molecules working to keep iron atoms under control so they don't accidentally hurt things. I'll introduce you to some of them in a moment. When it comes to biology, the ferric ferrous thing also matters. It impacts iron absorption. The ferrous form is what goes in. This means dietary iron has to be converted. Ferry reductase does the deed, but it's not perfect. So not all the ferric iron becomes ferrous iron. When you consume ferrous iron, it's all going in. Of course, going in does not mean getting in. It goes into the enterocytes. These are the cells that line your gut. But a lot of the time, these little guys go to the grave, carrying the iron they picked up. Hepcidin controls whether the iron is passed on or not. Now, 
as a rule. When you're iron deficient, hepcidin is thin on the ground. So more iron gets in. Now, before we look at what happens next, I want to put things in perspective. Hepcidin's biology can be compromised. He can be a no-show. This is what happens in iron overload disorders. Examples are hemochromatosis and blood transfusion therapies. But most of the time, when things go awry, the problem is hepcidin is being a problematic bully. There's way too much of him. This happens when you're insulin resistant and suffering from a variety of chronic illnesses, including COVID. In fact, if you're suffering from long COVID, functional iron deficiency might be behind some of those symptoms. Watch this video to learn more. So let's get back to the iron. It's transported to where it is needed. And every cell needs a little. But the biggest iron consumers are the cells responsible for making red blood cells. Because of that redox chemistry, the iron must be transported in specialized vehicles. And any iron that is not being used must be stored safely away. The liver carefully loads the iron coming in onto the transferrin tracks. Each transferrin track can hold two ions. Now, the number of trucks is finite, which can create an awkward situation. And when there is more iron than trucks, the extra iron spills into the circulation. It's referred to as NTBI, which stands for non-transferrin bound iron. It's dangerous, so cells that can clear the iron step in and work hard to get the iron out of the circulation as soon as possible. Clearing NTBI is primarily the job of liver cells. They have a special transporter, the ZIP-14 transporter, that grabs the escaped iron and brings it inside. Once it's inside, it gets shuttled to the specialized iron storing molecules. And everyone lives happily ever after. Uh, maybe. Sometimes the liver can get weighed under by the excessive load of iron. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out this is not healthful. But this is not the point of today's story. Since free floating iron constitutes the big risk, when there is lots of NTBI circulating, it's a case of all hands on deck. Any cell with a ZIP-14 transporter helps clear the iron. And beta cells in the pancreas are one of the cell types with a ZIP-14 transporter. Now it's there to actually transport zinc, not iron, because zinc is something that beta cells need lots of. But when the chips are down, that ZIP-14 transporter helps mop up the circulating iron. Working as a team, NTBI levels don't remain elevated for long. So, there's nothing to worry about, right? Well, that is exactly what our team set about finding out. A single dose of an iron supplement, they used 120 milligrams of ferrous sulfate, was given to healthy iron replete men. As expected, serum iron levels and transfer and saturation increased after the single dose of the iron supplement. What wasn't expected was that the glucose levels also rose. Now remember, these guys were healthy. Anyone who was glucose intolerant was excluded from participating in the study. The difference is negligible, but significant. When the team probed a little further, they established that that increase in glucose was most likely a reflection of changes in insulin kinetics. You can see this here. Insulin levels were higher. Oops, too much of a good thing became a liability. Not just in theory, in reality. Iron supplements hurt beta cells in the moment. It's a short-term effect. 
maybe it doesn't matter. What about long term? Well, to date, there are no studies that have directly linked iron supplements with type 2 diabetes. But iron supplementation has been linked to gestational diabetes. A recent study concluded that pregnant women who were not iron deficient taking iron supplements significantly increased their risk for gestational diabetes. And removing iron, both physiologically and chemically, have been shown to be beneficial. It's food for thought. Taking extra nutrients and things is something we are encouraged to do, both by health gurus and the media. But iron is one of several supplements you need to be wary of self-medicating with. Iron supplements can be life-saving when you need them, but they can cause unexpected harm when you don't. Supplement wisely. Want a little help scouting out the supplements you're taking? Let me take a look at your supplement regimen and tell you what I think. Are they helping or hurting your body chemistry? To learn more, visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com. Browse our library or enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone with iron issues? Share this video with them. So they realize the importance of supplementing wisely. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.